So to create a realistic glazing effect, all we do is add a bump to the glass material. Unfortunately, we can't use the typical or default glazing material. So I'm going to quickly run through how to create this effect and successfully apply it to your glass material. So what I have here is a storefront curtain wall system. And I'm going to change my view to a realistic view. And this is actually important because in order to align it correctly, you're going to need these graphic settings set up. So I'm going to go to a realistic view, I'm going to go to graphic display options, and I'm going to turn on shadows, ambient shadows, and I'm just going to change the effect a little bit. I'm going to go 70, 50, 20. And then I'm going to click apply. Now you'll see we've got a curtain wall system with some glazing on it and some shadows. So now what I want to do is I want to create the material, the realistic glass material. So I'm going to go under manage materials <clears throat> and you need to make sure that you have a material that allows you to to change uh, to add a bump pattern. So if you'll notice if I go to glass or glazing this is what we have uh, applied which is glass to our material. And you can see all the only settings you have are a tint and a color. Well we need more than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a Revit material that allows uh, a little more customization. And now just because I've gone through the, the motions of it, I know which one works the best. There are some other options, but this worked the best for me, and it's the glass block material. So I'm going to quickly search for glass block. And you can see here under the asset name, it's a glass block asset. And I'm going to click replace. And what's nice about the glass blocks is that you have all these settings now. Notice you have reflectivity, transparency, bump. You have all these awesome options that you can use. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change it to a dark blue color. And that's really just my preference. I mean, whatever color glass you want, you can use. So I'm going to click a dark blue. And then I'm also going to change the, the render appearance to a glass curtain wall so you start to see it a little bit better. And now what we want to do is we want to change where it says bump map. So let me let me actually make this rendering appearance a little bit bigger so you can see. So what you'll see is that the the glass in this rendering image here has these these little bumps along it and that's because of the bump map that's applied. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to something more reasonable. So if I click masonry unit glass block blah 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 dot png I'm going to replace it with the bump map that I've provided and so that would be under my materials library and now there's one called glass bump square and so all it is is a gradient so if I select here all it is is a gradient um, white middle with a, a gradient black on, on the edges now what's important here is understanding the size of your glass panes in your project. So for now I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to click OK. And if I zoom in, you'll notice you can see this sort of pattern uh, displaying. Or actually, we didn't remove all of the glass blocks. Let me just check that again, sorry. If I go back to Appearance, there's an image set for the transparency on the gla glass block. We want to remove that image. So remove image and click OK. Now, it might be kind of hard to see, but if you look closely, you could actually see these sort of bumps happening in your in your glass block. And this is the reason why we want to go realistic with the shading, because you can see it a little better. <clears throat> and if you want, what I've done in the past in order to get this lined up is I'll crank up the bump intensity, so the bump amount. I'll crank it up to like something absurd, 500, just so that you can see in realistic. And there you can see, you can see it really well. So obviously our, our, our gradients are a little too small. But what you want to do, if I tab around and I select the actual panel, I can get a size, uh, an idea for what the panel is in this project. And if you have multiple size panels, you might need to you might need to actually create a couple different materials. But it should fit pretty well based on the, the size that you set up. So what we have here is you can see this panel is about 7 foot 8 by 4 feet wide. So 7, 8 tall, 4 feet wide. So we'll do we'll do 8 by 4 and a half. So if I go back to my materials, I go to appearance, and I select my gradient pattern, I'm going to change the scale of it. So I'm going to unlock the constraints, 
and the width I'm going to do four foot six and the height oops sorry four foot six inches you gotta type inches and the height I'm gonna do eight feet tall and I'm gonna click done I'm gonna click apply and I'm gonna click OK now you can see we have a much bigger gradient going on here but the only downfall is that it's in the middle it's repeating in the middle which is not where we want it to be and so this is where Revit would be nice to have UVW mapping but it doesn't so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the materials I'm going to move the box out of the way a little bit so we can at least see. So I'm going to click the gradient and now I'm going to change the offset. So in the Y direction it looks like it's almost in half. So we'll go up four feet. And the X direction it looks like it might be about half too so we'll go two feet. Click done. Click apply. And what you'll see is that the gradient you can see the, the, the lighter piece up here and the, the darker piece down here. The gradients lined up very nicely with, with the actual gla glass material. So the one last thing we want to do is we want to turn that, that bump down a little because remember we, we intensified it just to see. So I'm going to turn that bump down to let's say 100. So now it's a little bit more difficult to see in this view but if I was to render, <coughs> render this image you'll see how different the glass looks. So actually, you know what? I'll, I'll do a, a few panels in the middle here. I'll select a couple panels. And I'm going to make those glass number two. I'm going to make those the old glass material. And I'll do a quick rendering side by side so you can see the difference. So we'll do glass clear glazing. So now let's set up a, a camera. Oh, there it is. Must have been on the wrong side here. So I'm just going to pan. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to run a quick rendering on high. I'll do exterior sun only, sky few clouds. I'll do a, let's do a summer solstice, but let's make it 11 a.m. And I'll be right back. So I'm back and the rendering finished. <clears throat> what you're going to notice right away is I screwed up a little. Um, the glass is not transparent, but if you look closely, it might be hard to see on the video, but you can see there's a little bit of an effect that, that's showing this bump. You can especially see it when you look through the clear glass and the, on the, the, the glass that's beyond. You can see how there's this sort of wave effect and it adds a little realism. So I'm actually going to go back and show you what I screwed up on so that when you're following along, you don't screw up as well. So if I go to my materials and go back to that glass material, so here's the glass material. What I notice is because I removed that transparency the transparency image, um, it actually turned transparency off and so we weren't able to see through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the settings on my uh, glass bump material which I tested and I know works very well and you can see right away transparency is 88 and reflectivity is 16 and 15. So I'm going to do the same thing on this material. So transparency, I'm going to crank it up to 88. <clears throat> and then under uh, reflectivity, I'm going to go 16 and 15. 16, 15. Now I'm actually going to turn the transparency down a little bit on this one because I feel like it was a little too clear before. And I'm going to click apply and click OK. And you'll see I'm actually able to see it. I don't know why I didn't notice that at first when I was doing realistic. So let me render this one more time and I'll be right back. Okay, so the rendering is finished. And if I zoom in, this is only on high, so it's a little grainy. But you'll notice the, the, the clear glass is actually the plain glass. And you can see it almost disappears. Uh, and you, you barely even notice that there's glass on there, even with the reflection set up. But if you notice the darker glass, the new glass we created, there's a little waviness to it. It has a sort of concave, convex look to it. And I think it creates uh, quite a dynamic look to your glass and definitely adds some realism if I zoom in there. And I have some examples that you can see in the sample files as well of uh, comparing all the different renderings uh, using this, this material. If you like what you saw here, then head on over to BIMAfterDark.com and check out more videos just like this one.